Uh, are you able to hear me uh, clearly as uh, before I? Yes, thank you, thank God. Okay, great, great. Well, again, praise the Lord, teaching everyone. We thank God for your presence. And want to say one more time, Merry Christmas to each and every one. Uh, we thank God. I know, I know, we all probably get, uh, gain a couple pounds, few pounds here after <laughs> after Christmas. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, yeah, several dishes from different family members, and you know, we thank God. It was a little, as we know, it was a little different this year, a little different. But we thank God. That, thank God for allowing us to be able to yet come together. You know, we know that we know that as we know, Jesus is the reason for the season. So thank God for the you know for the young kids and all the any adults. You know, allowed us to be able to have gifts from, from different ones, and we thank God for that. But we know the ultimate gift is Jesus Christ Himself. Glory to God, and we thank God again for allowing us to come together, and thank God He allowed us to be here. Thank God he allowed us to be here uh, one more time, one more day. So we come to give him glory and, and, and just and let, let the Lord have his way. So we thank God again for your presence. Thank God for allowing you to be with, be, be with us this morning. I see Sister Sonia. God bless you, Sister Sonia. Thank God for, like, for seeing you one more time. Glory to God. We thank God for you. And uh, just thank God, my God. At this time, we're gonna go right into our, we got to, now that song that was just playing, so beautiful song, Lady P had selected, and it was, and it's, it's it right, it goes right into the lesson. So we thank God for that. Amen. Beautiful, 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 beautiful selection, beautiful. So we thank God for that worship song. And at this time, we're gonna go right into our our, our lesson. At this time, um, I'm actually evangelist. Diane, if she can open us up with prayer to start, and the evangelist Owens will open up so with prayer. I'm sorry, with uh, with scripture. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we came to say thank you. Thank you. We came to say we love you. Yes, thank Lord. You. Oh God, Lord, but first, before we give you all that, we want to say forgive us. Yes, Lord. Yes. We don't want to approach your throne any kind of way. Yes. We want to come humble and we want to say, forgive us, God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, God, we thank you because you heard us, oh, God. Yes. We thank you because you forgave us, oh, God. Yes. Yes. Lord, we thank you on today, God, for another day. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for being a shelter. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, oh for being our God, for covering us, oh, yes, God. Yes, Lord. Hey, God, we thank, thank you. you. Oh God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hey God, we thank, thank you. Jesus. We thank you. You have blessed us with another day, yes, God, Lord. that we will not yes. take for granted. Oh God, that we will not fail to give you glory. Thank thank you. Thank you. That is due you, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we bless you on this morning. Yes, we Lord. bless you for life on this morning, God. Yes. I got a most Sunday. It could have been worse, oh God. Ah, hey, but it's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we could be burying someone, but we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, you kept our loved ones, oh God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, you covered our churches, oh God, and we bless you. Oh Lord, we thank you on today. Oh God, we bless you. Oh God, is we grateful. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, grateful God. Hallelujah. Grateful. 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 Yes. We thank you, God. We feel that you love us, oh God. Yes. We know you, we say we love you, but we thank you because we feel that you love Hallelujah. us. We feel it, we feel it. All of us here that I see. It wasn't just your grace and mercy, God, that showed us. It was you touching us, God. Yes, my God. Thank you, Jesus. You reached out your hand and you touched us. Thank and we you, Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. You spared us. You, you saved the hand of the enemy, God. And we bless yes, you. Thank yes, you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Death all around us. Yes. But yet you spared us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you, God. Yes. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this body that's on the line, oh God, and everyone that will watch it later, God. Yes. We ask you to let your anointing flow through this Zoom, oh God. Yes. Let it touch, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Let it break yokes. Oh, God. Break the bonds, oh God, in the yes. name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, let us heed to instructions, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you so preciously give us. Yes. Oh God, we thank you. 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 Because you are a good God. In yes. Us, yes, in all things, and while we're in it, we say you are good. Ah, yeah. yes. <laughs> while we're in it, you're still good. Yes. Oh, we bless you, God. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. You're wonderful. Uh, yes. Words can't express. Words from our dictionary can't express. Yes. How good you are. Oh, God, you wonderful, God. Oh, God, we bless you. We ask you to touch our pastor, first lady. Abo Shanda. Grant them their heart's desire, oh, God. Lift them up, oh, God. Encourage them, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen them for this journey, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shanda. Oh, God, we know you're already doing it, but God, we ask you to continue. Lord, we ask you to touch our teacher, God. As you, as you have already done throughout these Sundays, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, you talk, you give it to her, God. Oh, as she speaks, oh, God, it'll be the oracle of your words, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, have your way in this service, oh, God. As we Decrease, oh God, you increase. Oh God, let us receive. Let our hearts be open to receive it, oh God. Though it may hurt, though it may cut, but we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the correction. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And we say yes to your correction, oh God. We say yes, Lord. Yes. Hey, God, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we bless you. We thank you for all that is on the line, all that is to come, and all that just will hear after. Oh, God, we know you are already there in whatever situation of their concerns. Oh, God, you are already there. Uh, prayer requests that weren't uttered, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you go there. You can reach up where we can, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we call it done. We plead the blood. In the name of Jesus, yeah. over yeah. our yeah. children, oh God, we plead the blood. Yeah. Our extended yeah. family members, we plead the blood. Yeah. In the name of yeah. Jesus, oh God, yeah. we call it done. In the name of Jesus, oh God, bless us on this day. Yeah. Let us carry the word that we hear today. Let us apply it, oh God. Let us implement it, oh God, as as we learn, oh God, that we go further in you, oh God, deeper in you, oh God, higher in you, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we bless you on today in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Glory, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Evangelist. That powerful prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. At our scriptures coming from Evangelist Owens. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, I, tell, I, feel, I feel church. All right. I know we in the house, but there's a song to say when God is in the building. All right. It yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. I know it's Christmas. <laughs> I, I have a Christmas scripture here. But 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 Christmas is is is, is 365 days a year, all right? All right, all right. And yes. we bring gifts, we bring sacrifice of praise. Right. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Oh, my shot. 
Okay, Hallelujah. praise God, praise God. I feel Jesus in the room. <laughs> hey, mama, mama, we, we're gonna, uh, and praise the Lord, everybody, give it on to God, to my pastor, our first lady. To, uh, thank you for your, your drive-bys. <laughs> <laughs> Good drive-bys. You see, when you hear the word drive-by, sometimes people think of gunshots. <laughs> we got a pastor and first lady did some drive-bys. <laughs> you know, pastor, first lady, for your okay. drive bys, okay. drive bys of love. How about that? All right. Uber so. loving, dropping off. Uber <laughs> love, drive by okay. love, love <laughs> that. I feel good. You know, we got time. We quarantine. All right, bless God. In that, um, Matthew, coming from Matthew, the first, no, the second chapter. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I'm going to tell y'all, uh, uh, Jesus is not a baby. Not anymore. He right. was a baby, but he's full, he full grown and he's moving by the spirit. Um, right. Matthew 2, in the ninth, beginning at the ninth verse. It says, when they had heard that the king, I'm sorry, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star went which was sorry let me change these glasses move on my lease when they heard they had heard the king they departed and lo the star which they saw had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child was and when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and when they had come, oh my God, and when they were come into the house. All right. Yes. That, I, that's where I, I couldn't hardly get to it because he's in the house. All right. Hold on, y'all. shot. When they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. Oh, God. Worship him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And they didn't leave the way they came in Jesus' name. <laughs> and being right. warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Hallelujah, we're in the house where he is. Yes. All right. And we won't leave the way we came in Jesus' name. Right, right. 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 Thank God for that prayer. Thank God for all of you. We won't leave the way we came. And we bring right. sacrifice of praise because we love him. Because right. he first hey. loved us. Yeah. Bye. Oh, my God. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Thank you, Badgers, all that beautiful scripture. My God, thank God for the word of God. <laughs> Glory to God. My God, they say, when we encounter with, encounter with Jesus, you will not leave the same the way you came. Glory to God. Thank God, my God. At this time, uh, we have, uh, have a worship. So, oh, before we get started, do we have any testimonies at all? Before we get started, any any testimonies at all? If you have any testimonies. Glory to God. Evangelist Owens gave us one of the with the, with the uh, scripture at the same time. So, but if we have any, any more testimonies at all, any more testimonies? Pastor Perkins, praise the Lord, everybody. This is praise just on yeah, I want to testify. I went through this lesson yesterday. I felt so good in my body, but my spirit, man, I feel like I'm bouncing off my walls right now. I'm laying in the bed. I refuse to be stopped. I refuse to be hindered. I refuse anything the enemy is trying to do. He don't have power over me. I was going to lay in this lesson, sit in this lesson, but I was going to hear Lady Perkins. Right. This lesson in Jesus' name. I was going to be in Sunday school. Everybody's so concerned about this pandemic. It has been a blessing. Yes, it has took. Yes, this year has hurt. But I was going to be in this here lesson. And what a way I could be in this lesson laying in the bed. Oh my God, I'm excited. I'm stopping. Okay. I love everybody. God bless. I'm excited. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Well, we thank God for you, Sister Sonia. Thank God for that testimony. My God, my God. 
Yes, you. yes. We thank God that you are here with us. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God. At this time, we'll go into our worship song and then we go right into our lesson. Thank God. Praise, God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I told y'all I go on a love fest, but you know, that that that's what I do. But this this song had blessed uh uh I was we was in the car riding, just blessed me the other day, and I thought, let me share this one. Uh, um, then pray that it blessed you. He's my rock. Oh hallelujah. My hallelujah. He's my rock. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I was Glory. listening to a message this morning Glory. that blessed me and said, you built for this. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> You built for this. I heard one one pastor talking about stand. And so the song, yeah, I know you 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 was on the line too when he was saying stand that you you can make it. Don't give up. Don't All give right. up. All then right. I went to my cousin's pastor and he said, Don't give up. All Hallelujah. Right. Because the way God constructed you, he yes. constructed you before the foundations of the world yes. because he knew you can make this yes. because of your construction. All right. Hallelujah. All right. So great. Praise God, he's my rock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Glory to God. My God, my God, my God. We thank God. I hope you was able to hear that, that song. A beautiful, another beautiful worship song. He's yeah, beautiful. My, glory to God. And when I heard when the song was coming on, it was saying that seasons may come and seasons go, you know. But uh, thank God that he's not up and down. Glory to God. He is a solid rock. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday and forevermore, today and forevermore. Glory to God. So we thank God he doesn't he doesn't go back and forth. Glory to God. He is the same, but he is our rock. Glory to God, my God. We thank God for that beautiful selection. At this time, we can better go into our a lesson, which is a beautiful lesson. Um, it's coming to you. And Lady P, at this time, we we'll are turn to the hand of Lady P for our beautiful Lesson on December 27, lesson number four. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the, Praise Lord. the Lord. I'm going to share my screen on today. Um, and we know a lot of people are on video. That's no problem. I'm glad you're here. If you have a comment or you want to say something, you, you can use the hand emoji or you can just throw something in the chat. To say, to say, I, I, you know, I have a question or I have a comment. So, and we can hear you. <laughs> All right. All right. God bless you. We're just glad that that you're here to join us. I'm getting ready to share my screen um, for the Sunday school lesson, so that whoever uh, sees it later don't have our book. You're able to share in our lesson with us. God is good. Our lesson today is let us love one another and we say praise the lord to everyone that's on the line praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah and thank you for joining us praise god and that that song just blessed me because whatever you're going through you you have a rough day and and when no one else understands he's my rock and and I can still make it. I can still make it. He comes along and lets you know, okay, I got you. You, you had a moment. Yeah. I got you. you. You had a moment. I got you. So so thank the Lord for, you know, and so then he picks you up and said, okay, I'm gonna stay. You know, we we have a um a dog that that's really old. Okay. And and the thing is with with him his he has a bad leg the leg gets weak he, he he's oh he's just like all of us when you know we get older and our knees start giving out and all this kind of stuff so his legs get get weak sometimes and sometimes he'll he'll kind of go down and he has to sit and then he wants to get up but he, he don't have the strength to get, get up on that leg but if he gets up on if you can pick up his his pick him up from the back and stand him up he's like okay shake the leg out okay leg got some strength and now I can start walking again. Thank God, because he will pick us Thank up God. in a moment. He'll pick us up and stand us on our feet and say, okay, there you go. Get right. going. Sure. Hallelujah. Sure. In a moment. So he's my rock on the solid rock I stand. I love the Lord on today. I love the Lord on today because that's what he does for us. In our lesson, we're yeah. talking today about um, let us love one another. 
and we're yeah you know this particular series and this particular book is just bringing some uh bringing home statements that we've heard phrases that we've heard and reiterating them going over and reminding us and saying hmm what do that mean i've said that so long i've read that so long what do that mean? And if you notice, that's what we've been getting. So we're going to stick to that train of thought. And so here we have let us love one another. And it's just another reminder lesson that said, what does that mean? What does that mean? Let us love one another, giving honor to the pastor and to all the ministers and evangelists and saints on the line. I love you. God, God bless you. Um, our focus thought is come is saying we should love others because God so loves us. And this lesson is going to take us from a place of thinking that uh, um, there's a, I, I love you for a reason. There, there's a, uh, 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 you did this, so I'm gonna love you or, or I, I'm so good or I did this. And so that what makes me love you. But God is, is gonna, in this lesson, we getting ready to learn. The only way we can do any of this is because the, it started with him. Because he loved us. That's the only way we're able to do anything that, that, that this lesson is getting ready to tell us. All the lessons that have come, we can't do nothing of ourselves. And that's one thing we've learned in this series that is not about us. We can't do nothing of ourselves. Everything is because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Last time, time my greatest he that is in you. Guess what? Because the greater one is in us, that's how we're able to love one another. That's how we're able to, to take this commandment and run with it. Praise God. Because when we get the mindset that is not because of anything that we've done, it's not because of our abilities and it's all because Jesus loved us first, then we can move on. So this lesson is taking it out of our hands, basically, taking it out of our hands and putting it where it belongs. Our focus verse says out of 1 John 4 and 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And we are going to get more into uh, these um, um, words and things like that further into the text. Um, um, our lesson text is coming out of John 3, 16, 17. And you know, the past lessons, we've been quoting this, this scripture, John 3, 16, because it's, it's, it's relevant. Any, like we said before, everything that we're learning, it is because he loved us first. It's because he started it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I just moved on my screen. Give me one second. I just moved my screen on my device. And I got to get back to my pages. <laughs> one second. There we go. Uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, so it gave, it told us who loved us first. It, it gave us all of that, but then it gave us his purpose. His purpose. He loved us. Yes, he loved us. He said, but that the world through him might be saved. He came to bring us back into his presence, bring us back into fellowship with him. He wants us saved. He wants us ready when he comes. The next scripture is coming out of 1 John 4, 7 through 21. And it says, beloved, let us love one another. That's one thought. Remember the colon, Sister Maxine, you know. <laughs> For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the bottom line. If you don't have any love, if you don't know how to love, if, if love is not in you, then you don't know God. Because if, when he comes in, that's what he is. He is love, okay? 
in, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. This is what the real love looks like. This is what this is what it's looking like. Okay. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We're going to get more into this going further. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. It's just morally right to do, okay? Uh, uh, that, that, that's what ought is. We, we ought to do it. It's just morally right. It's just right. Uh, uh, um, it, whatever the situation, it's just right to do. That's what ought is. Right. If he did this for us, we should just automatically step up, okay? No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfect in us. Yes. Everybody know that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. Remember the last lesson and we always say that, always remember the past lessons, greater is he that is in us. And it says here on 14th verse, and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, do God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. You see, it keeps trying to reiterate. It keeps trying to reiterate that love is not without God. Knowing love is not without God. If he's in you, you're going to know love. If he's not in you, you're going to miss it. Okay? It says here in verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. Ah, then we're going to get more into that. That's serious. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And his commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Because that because the, the love of God in you is going to, it, it spills over. It's infectious. What God gives us is infectious. It's good for the next one and the next one and the next one. And he wants to share. And when he gives us, he wants to share. So when he endows us with his love, it's automatically going to spill over and be shared. Praise God. So if you can't love somebody you see every day, then how do you say you love God, the one that you don't see? And you have yes. to just trust that he's there. You have to just trust that he exists because you just have to believe that he is. Yes. God. The, and here is our culture connection. And what happens is just to explain our culture connection brings the lesson home uh, because the, the, the scriptures are over 2000 years ago and we know that the scriptures are always relevant. But the culture connection takes and ties it in to our current culture so you can get a greater understanding. And the example that the culture connection used today is called the firefighter. And it's talking about a firefighter. He was 34 years old in New York City and it's going back to 2011, okay? And, and 
Uh, he was on his way to play golf with his brother, his brothers, uh, when he heard the report about the first plane crashing into the World Trade Center. He called his wife, okay, to ask her to tell his brother he would catch up with him later. Then he returned to his squad to get his gear, okay? Then what happened, he drove to the entrance of the tunnel that led to where he was going, but the tunnel was closed for security reasons, okay? It says then that uh, that's when love overtook uh, fear and fatigue. He strapped, mm, mm, mm. he strapped, uh, um, Sixty pounds of gear on his back and raced on foot through the tunnel to the twin towers to save others. The sad part is he died along with three hundred and forty-two of his firefighting brothers when the tower collapsed. But it wanted us to see that his love for his fellow New Yorkers and his fellow fire firefighters cast out his fear for his own safety yes. and drove him to heroism in history. And that's the one thing I wanted to, to point out is that what happens is love can drive you. It can drive you. And we've talked about this before as to what passions are driving you, what's driving you to do what you do, what's, what's motivating you. His love it cast out the fear of what could happen. If these firefighters had been thinking, well, okay, I got a family and what's gonna happen to me? And, and oh, 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 they all would have paused in their tracks. They all would have been thought, but, but the word that I heard on today that you was constructed for this. Everybody can't be a firefighter. Everybody can't be a, a, a the first line the first line of defense. Everybody can't be the nurses and the doctors today that's, that's caring for the coronavirus patients. Everybody can't be that. Everybody is not constructed to do that. Hallelujah. But here we got the love and the passion for what God has put in you, cast out the fear of what can happen. All these nurses and doctors today are in there helping these contagious yes. patients, yes. but they can't be fearful that this could, it can jump on me, it can jump on me because it will pause them and cause them not to do their job. Right. Yes. But what happens is the love casts out the fear of what can happen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And it drives them to do what they need to do, uh, whatever the purpose is. And here in this culture connection, that love drove him. Yes. Praise God. He wasn't trying to be a hero, but it drove him. Yes. Okay. And it talks about the next paragraph talks about there's an Arthur uh, and a family friend that wrote, it said every momentous event, even a tragedy, uh, tragedy has a symbolic figure. None bigger than Stephen Siller, whose stature only grows with time as New Yorkers and people from around the world follow his footsteps. So when people start reading, reading up on, he was off work, he was ready to go play golf. Had he went and, and did what he was intending to do, he would probably still be here today. But how will he be feeling knowing that I could have tried, I could have did something you know that he probably couldn't live with that and so it says here Stephen Siller's example that John wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost there is no fear in love but perfect fear I mean perfect love cast out all fear and I know in every one of our lives that love has propelled us and has drove us to do something that would have, we would have stood in our tracks and say, no, I can't say that. I can't do that. I can't stand up for that. I can't, no, no, you know, because and fear would have paused you. And then what would have happened? Praise God, Evangelist Owens. 
Amen. I just wanted to, to, you made me think about what Pastor P said when you're reading that culture connection. Mm -hmm. This is a, a clear example of somebody that's committed mm -hmm. and not just involved. And not just involved. That's it. Some people just wear the uniform, just go through the process of getting on the team. But when you commit it and not just involved, it's something that rises in you like a second nature. Mm -hmm. it, it, it don't even give you time to fear, pause, and then cause. Mm -hmm. I heard you say fear, pause you, and then it calls. Mm -hmm. It calls fear. Fear, pause, and cause mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. Failure. Fear, yeah. pause, and cause torment. Mm -hmm. It pause something that's positive, something good. It's not pausing something. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes fear could block something and and preserve you from seeing the real deal. I heard that positive mm -hmm. side of that. But when you said fear, pause and cause, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But but committed and not just involved, give you that perseverance to, to just press. And you're not even thinking about what's involved in the press. You just, it's, it's automatic. That's it. That's it. It's automatic. It's automatic. You're not paralyzed. Fear can paralyze yes. the situation. Yes. It paralyze you and you won't fulfill the purpose that God has set on your life. We're going to contemplate a topic in our outline. We're gonna be talking about three different areas. God is, God so loved us. The next area is there's no fear in love. And the third area is let us love one another. These are the areas that we're gonna address within this lesson. Um, say and, and a lot of times just for people um, who are not used to our books, these books have so much meat in it until you will find we we don't want to read it like we read in the story but what happens is there's so much meat in the lesson until Amen. you don't miss it so therefore you may see me addressing several areas in in it trying not to read the whole book to you you know but it's so much meat and we don't want you to miss it i don't want to just create my own thoughts all but you know anytime anytime you know i want god to have his way but there's so much meat that god spins who the 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 inspiration of the writers of these books god has taken and given them such insight until i we don't want you to miss it so you will see that a lot of things in the books we're pulling out hallelujah because there's so much good meat here on um, contemplating the topic it say here talking about the theory surrounding the holiday known as valentine's day okay yeah uh, uh have anybody ever researched valentine's day to find out where it came from i never thought about that we just like it you know, we just like it. You know what I'm saying? We just like it. Oh, somebody created an excuse to eat some chocolate. You know, somebody, you know, it was created for us to to separate and segregate time to honor our loved ones. And Valentine's Day is not just, we, we're not going to just talk about and focus on the couples, you know, but... I, we used to give my mom a, a, a card or something like that. So Valentine is, is is a love day. Let's just put it that way. You have your hand up, Pastor. No, 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 no. Okay. So what happens here is says some theories. They gave a theory as to where where it originated from. It says Saint Valentine or Valentinus, of whom there were few. Okay. It said who supposedly helped young couples marry. Now. <laughs> That sounds good, right? But it says defying their vows of celibacy in the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. So, you know, in the Catholic Church, they vowed, they vowed celibacy, you know, the nuns and, and even the priests vowed. We're talking about the Roman Catholics, okay? And so therefore the, the Valentinus came along and, and married them <laughs> to defy. Okay, so then it says another idea links Valentine's Day to a pagan feast celebrating fertility. Okay. I'm glad that's out the window because it will be a minimum probably of people celebrating. Okay, <laughs> we're talking about, we're just talking about fertility. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> but here it say no matter its origin, okay? And much to the uh, chagrin, and that word I was trying to get a, I tried to get a pronoun, a good pronunciation on it, but it's chagrin, chagrin, and it's talking about a distress or embarrassment of having failed or been humiliated. So it says to basically not um, no matter its origin and much to the chagrin of our single brothers and sisters. Clearly, Valentine's Day is not going away anytime soon. So it's saying not to embarrass any singles, it's not to reflect on anybody like that, but it's not going away. So that's what it's trying to say here. But they said this day often marked by sharing candy cards, flowers, et cetera, et cetera. And it talks about the, these are tokens that convey the feelings, okay, of individuals and, and to their loved ones. But it says, Today, Valentine's Day celebrates love. Then it tells us, so do the scriptures. All right. Okay, so do the scriptures. And it talks about, the Bible tells us the love of God is unconditional. So how do we celebrate our love of God? We don't, we, it's not just one day. Okay. Uh, um, uh, it says here, for believers, the love we share okay, with our church family is closely tied to our spirituality. The book of Galatians tells us this type of love is the fruit of the spirit. And Jesus declared that love specifically, our love for one another will reveal we are his disciples. That, that's that's what, uh, what, what the love of one another reveals, that we are his disciples. So the scriptures, you can get in the scriptures and, and have a Valentine's for Jesus. Right. Praise yeah. God, a Valentine's for Jesus. <laughs> so here we go further into searching the scripture. So it just wanted to bring and tie in Valentine's Day with our love for Jesus. Praise God that we don't, we don't have to wait for a specific day, okay? Um, it says here, God so loved us. That's our first outline, God so loved us. And it talks about how his love is the most powerful in the world. And now it gave us a rhetorical question. And you know, we have rhetorical questions. Uh, and it says, have you ever experienced unconditional love? And it says here, love is not tied to anything you did or did not do. Isn't that something? It, it, isn't that something? And, and our parents, that let, let, the, the one thing we can and, and, and I, we can because I know knew my mother. We had that with our mother and our parents, and I know other ones can attest to that. Her love for our, her children was not tied to anything we did, we did or did not do. This is the love that a parent should be having for their their children. It's not tied to what you do or what you don't do. You know, things are, are used for discipline or whatever. But my love for you is not tied. God blessed me with you. He gave you to me as a gift. So my love for you, how it don't matter how bad you are, how you, what are you doing? I always see that you can be better. I always see that you can be redeemed. So my love for you is not on condition. And so this, this is how God wants us to see that his love is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. And I, I'm, I, I love that. I love that. So it says here, he loves us with nothing more needed. Nothing more needed. It's period, period, period. Period. It says here, uh, uh, we profess love a lot of ways. I, and I know we do. We say we love this or that. Guess what? How many, it says here, we love food. We love food. 
okay? We love teens. I know we love teens. Because <laughs> I hear my brother-in-law. <laughs> I hear Troy and them, you know. We love our home state. Oh, Cali. Go Cali, go Cali. But, the, but it's what it's trying to say is this type of love is different. We use the word loosely. We, we use the word loosely. And I'm not telling nobody don't use the word anymore, but we're getting an understanding of what, what it means here. It says here, it is based on, in our love, what, what, when we're doing this, it's based on our location, the taste, the preferences. But unconditional love is not based on external factors. It's based on internal decisions of the giver. Is based on the internal decision of the giver. Ultimately, love is a choice. That's what that's what this lesson is getting ready to say. And and you're gonna see where it becomes a choice because it's a commandment. And God don't do anything. He didn't. He didn't uh, 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 give us anything where we did not have a choice because he did not want robots. He wanted us to choose him, choose right, choose to love, choose this, choose that, because he, 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 he's not a God that wanted robots. He's not a God that say, I'm just going to make you do this, but choose it. So love, you're going to, we're going to see later. It is a commandment. So ultimately love is a choice. That's what the lesson is giving us today. It is not an emotion or a feeling, or we can we tie it to that. We cannot fall into or out of either we do or we do not love. That that's either we do or we don't. And we hear we hear it all the time. So what when we're talking about here, we, we're not going with the we're not talking about and it's going to get into that. So I don't want to jump ahead. And it called it talking about the romance stories and things like that. This is not the case. In fact, we have control over whom we love. It says here, the only question is whether we choose to love. Do we choose it? It says, for sinners who has been saved by the grace of God, this is the crux of the gospel. Mm. This is what brings sinners to Christ. It says, God loved us. God chose to love us. Mm. Not because we were unique or gifted, but because he created us and wanted to love us. He, he, he wanted to love us. Isn't that beautiful? He wanted to love you. Ah, glory to God. It's a uh, the question for us today is, Will we choose to love him in return? That, that's all he wants. Because loving God is going to dictate how you act. It's going to dictate how you treat him. It's going to dictate some things. So the question today is, will we choose to love him in return? Because, because he chose to love us, will we choose him? Mm. Here under, under the subtitle A, sent his son to die for us. And we are familiar um, with uh, what he's done. Remember the past lessons. And we're looking at, and, and we, in these past lessons, we've been going through the Godhead. We have been talking about the Godhead and, and showing how the Godhead ties in. And so it's, he, it's, and, it's, and it says here, the Bible does not teach that God the Father sent God the Son to earth to die for the sins of humanity. That that sounded kind of mm, like, what, what, what that mean? But it's trying to let us know, it's talking in the Godhead. It said God is one. God himself left his throne. But remember he's omniscient, he's omnipresent. Remember that. So he can, he can move from one area and still be in there. Okay, so we don't want to get it twisted. We can't think it with our in our finite minds and place him in like us. He is God. Yes. Okay, so God Himself, mm -hmm. He left His throne, yes. came to earth, 
suffered, died, and rose again on the third day to save all humanity from hell. He did was a purpose. All right. But God himself did it. Yes. Okay? Creating himself a body. He It says here, he didn't need to send somebody else. First of all, remember the past lessons. He couldn't find nobody. There was nobody good enough. Right. There was nobody worthy enough. He had to send himself. Yes. And remember, we talked about that before. Remember the line that you hear regularly in, in other areas that if you want something done right, right. Yes. what you got to do? You got to do it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> so guess what God did? He did it himself. All right. Okay. So because it wouldn't have been done right. Ah, humanity didn't have the power to say, I'm going to do it for everybody. Humanity, guess what? Humanity would have done. You made me mad. So you don't get it. You ain't right. You, you ain't right. So, 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 so I'm not going to give it to you. You know, that, that's our humanity. So we don't want to interject humanity when we're talking about the love of God. Okay. Because we ain't good and we don't get it right. And we do stuff. Okay. But we're talking right now. We're talking about God himself. It says here, um, it, it says the, when the Bible uses the phrase son of God, it speaks. Okay, it speaks about you the humanity of Jesus. Okay, because he came down so that he can feel what we felt, be an example. Okay, he was fully human while he was on earth. Jesus was unique. I say so. I think he was very unique. Okay, he was both fully God and holy man. Mm. So when we're talking about God and his infinity, we can't put and compare him to ourselves. It says here he slept, ate, prayed, cried, laughed, got tired. He did all of that. He did all of that. He had pain. And then in the end, he succumbed to death. He literally died. He died. Okay. His human nature with that part in view, we read how God gave his son to die on the cross. As the apostle Paul proclaimed, God was manifest in the flesh. Okay, so this is just reminding us of who we're talking about. Okay, going into the next uh, 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 part, it says that the world might be saved. So here is his purpose. And, and you remember John saw Jesus coming and said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. He announced him. He, that was John's purpose. He came because he was the forerunner to announce Jesus' entrance. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. So when he saw him, there he is. Behold, look at him. That's the one that's coming to take away the sins of the world. And it, and it says here, Jesus came to take away the sins of every person in the world. That is his, That was his goal. Nobody is exempt. He loved the whole world. We all have the ability to receive God. Now, will we all get it? No. But we have the ability. Okay? Will we all choose? No. Be and the reason I can say no, because some have already left here without him. So it's already proven. Jesus came to take away the sins of every person in the world, past, present, future. It, it, and remember in Acts, it talked about those that are far off. So the word of God keeps going and keep going and keep going. It's not going, the word of God is the thing that's going to stand even when heaven and earth pass away. The word of God will still be standing. And it's for the past, the present, and the future. It's for all of the generations ahead of us. It was for the generations behind us. It's for the generations today. He came for everybody in humanity. And it talks about here 
uh, of the Old Testament saints look, look, it was looking forward to the Messiah they never knew. That's why, because what happened when he came, they still didn't recognize him. There's still people today that don't recognize he came. It's a done data. It's done. You're still looking for something that's already done. That's why the Bible says he that you have to believe that he is. Because we cannot be saved if we don't believe who he is and that he is the savior and that he already came. He already died. He already sent back the Holy Ghost. If you can't believe that, you can't be saved. You have to believe in him. You have to believe that he is the Messiah, not that the Messiah is still coming. Okay. And, and so I'm, I'm moving on. I said, Jesus did not come to save a few. And we just talked about that. He taught, he came to save the whole world. Here it said, we have hope because God so loved the world. Remember, we get in an understanding of what we're talking about when we say, let us love one another. We're getting, that's all we're doing is getting an understanding. Evangelist Owens. Hey Amen. Uh, praise God. I'm enjoying everything I'm hearing. I want to just insert before you leave that part about the past, present, and future. How he was so amazing to even, even when he died and they put him in the grave. He took care of those who died before he came. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, he didn't leave anybody out. You said the past. Mm -hmm. the present and the future even those that came before he ah, that's it that, that's it see that's very past <laughs> ah, that's very past <laughs> that's very past those saints had already died mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he preached to them because he they died in the faith they mm -hmm. died looking for looking forward mm -hmm. so when he went in the grave he said like lady uh, like evangelist clark said i came to tell you I came. <laughs> I, I, I came down here because y'all was looking for me. Mm -hmm. Y'all read the book of Isaiah. Hey, y'all uh, was waiting. But let me come down here and all of this dirt and tell you your faith wasn't in vain. I came. Yes. I came I, I, down I, here. I only got three days down here now, okay? Because I got to get up. <laughs> but I came down here to tell you, Isaac, Huntable Shanda, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I came under this dirt to tell you I came. Yeah. Huntable Shanda. Why? Because he took care. He loved us so much. His love was able to go into the past. Yeah. It's right here in the present. Mm -hmm. He that is, was, and is to come. Hallelujah. I love that. I love that. I came to tell you, I came. Done. <laughs> done. Thank God. It's done. Sister Sonia, you see your hand. <laughs> Evangelist Zena started. We was in Bible study one night, and this question, because I kept hearing people say, you don't have to be baptized. Look at the thieves that was on both sides of Jesus when Jesus told the one that this day you'll be with me in paradise. Bishop Jordan said, when they pierced him in his side, it was enough blood flow. It was enough water flow. Everybody that was down there got baptized in his name, got washed in his name, because he had to go <laughs> to paradise before the thief could come. She started me. I'm the ah, I love that, Sister Sonia. <laughs> All that flow, they got baptized. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love that. That's that. That's Bishop. That's Bishop for you. That's Bishop for you. <laughs> but one thing I, I was thinking. Hi, Bishop Jordan. Yeah, that's our Bishop. And praise God. But one thing I was looking at when, when the uh, Daniel said three days. Oh, my God. With God, look what you can do in a short period of time. <laughs> all right. All right now. Short period of time. Hallelujah. So when you say I ain't got time and God say go. God say I'll I'll do a three day journey in one day. Look at look at look at woo, look what you can do in a short period of time. Hallelujah! Yes. We 
Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, oh, that's just taking it to another place. Oh, oh my God. Hallelujah. Did he did he not do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it all by himself. Hey, Hallelujah. Ah, to God. Three days, three days. I only got three days to come and tell you that I came. I did what I was supposed to do. I came, I did what I told you I was going to do. Oh, hey, God. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. And as proof, they got up walking. They got up and it opened up. A scene of men. Woof. Yeah. Yes. Don't tell me that when you're baptized with the Sonia, that you don't get up walking in the newness of life. You hurt her the They got up. Come on now, hallelujah. Hey, that was the first part of being baptized and walking in the new hey, You just started something. Yeah. You don't leave the way you came. I love, it. I, I love it. So when we get baptized, it says that we were going to walk in the newness. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Yes. That's it. I love it. Ah, that was enough blood and water. Ah, you, you, you. I like that. I, I like that. Uh -huh. Tell Bishop I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> praise God, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Evangelist Clark, I saw your hand. There you go. Quick peek. Mute. Unmute. Yeah. Unmute. Unmute. She's gonna have to sign. Praise Lord. <laughs> I thought about something when you was talking and and it was from the scripture that was read this morning. I had to ask Evangelist Owens again where the scripture because I, the Lord gave me something out of that. I told you that that's that Lord download stuff through these, these through these lessons. There was a was that had to happen mm -hmm. for him to be is. Mm. All right. All right. <laughs> when the wise man came to where he was, because guess what? He didn't. Evangelist always said he didn't stay a baby. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was in the manger. He was among us. Right. He was in the tomb. Mm -hmm. He was on the cross. And the was was that he was there because there was a love that was there that brought him through the manger. Because see, look at us. We don't stay babes in Christ. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We don't stay in a manger. We don't stay in, in wrapped up like that. We got to grow on a journey. Our love has to grow each time his love grew. Because when you a baby, the mother has to show you the love. You can't do it even though because he had to come and experience the life of humanity. So when he was a baby, Mary nurtured him while he was in that manger. Then as he, after the wise men left, as they went on, all you hear is that now you hear he had to help his daddy as a carpenter. <laughs> then as he grew, see, we talking about a was that is. Ah. <laughs> what was that is? <laughs> Without the was, how are we going to get to the is? Mm, mm. He was a baby. I was. But he still had to learn as a, because he was wrapped Lady in flesh. He Pink. still had to learn. <laughs> he still had to, he still had to grow. Yes. And as the journey went on, now he didn't, he, as he didn't win, because he was at 12, at 12 years old, mind you, he was still according to the, what, what was, what was the, the, the rule, 12 years old, he was teaching in the temple. Whoa. Yes, yes, yes. But here it is. He still was able able to, to expound to grown men. Mm. Yes, yes. Now there was, he was in the temple. Now as he go, now he as he go, I was at the pool of Bethesda. Mm. You heard about me. I was there. All right. You now. heard about me. I the lame man that was outside of the temple. I was there. See, without the was. Now we talking about an is. Hmm. All right, all right. I am. He is part of me. All right, make work that. And then when she said was, is, and is to come. 
See, we still living there. We talking about the what? We now we talking about is, and we still talking about is to come. I but am that Dr. I am. Woods, <laughs> Dr. Woods. See, they they went to a place where he was. How many times did people come to a place he was, and never left the way they came? He was in the tomb. They left the tomb knowing that he lived. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was a, that's that's another was. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said the was. Mm. It had to be a was to be a is. You know, I'm 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 loving that because I got our own lives right now. It, 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 I was looking when you say he don't stay a baby. We don't stay in swallowing clothes. Oh, hey, oh, God. Woo! Okay, that's it. There's a growth. There's a growth. There's a love growth. There's a love growth. First of all, you Lazarus didn't eat. You, you can't stay in it. And then I love that was because I can apply that to my life right now and say I was lost. All right. I but I. Now, I'm gonna do some bad, some bad English, uh -huh. but I is found. Uh -huh. ah! <laughs> hallelujah. I was lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> but my ears can see now. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. I, I'm loving this. It's because of the love of God, yes. because He loved us first. Yes. All of this is because he loved us first. Yes. Glory to God and his purpose was fulfilled. Glory to God. Glory to God. Evangelist, praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'll go real quick because I know you're trying to, to get go pat further. But uh that 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 was and is and is to come. See, 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 is is a form of be. Mm -hmm. Am is current, present. Is is current present? Yes. God told Moses, "I am." Yeah, all right. Yeah. So he's that yeah. I am. Present. Wherever you present, he's present. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So he was, am is, that. and is to come. Why? Because he's I am. Yeah. He's I am. I am that I am. So whatever, whenever you think he's not, he say I am. Yes. Ah, you can apply that to any sentence, any statement when you're talking about God, that he is, and he is right now. Yes. I am with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shall be with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Because shall is tomorrow. Hallelujah. So when you get to tomorrow, he's an am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's always in the am state. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I'm just looking. And, and, and this still segues us into this portion of the lesson, because this portion of the lesson is saying hope. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about hope right, right here. And it's a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing. So when we know that the I am is with us, we have some hope. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. It's a hope is an anticipation of something desired. Hallelujah. What do you hope for? Hallelujah. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us our hope is in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we just got a good dose of that one. Hallelujah. Praise God. It said we can have true rest. But see, this, this is when people wonder, how can you rest in him? We can have true rest in our minds because of the hope. See, the devil comes to confuse your mind. He comes to snatch it out of you. He comes to, to collect things in our mind in order to camouflage the hope. Hallelujah. But your mind rests when you rest on the hope. Hallelujah. When you rest on the anticipation of or, and the knowledge of God is with me. God is directing me. Yes. That's where the resting in the mind come from. It says here we are often 
burdened with worry, fear, and anxiety because we are concerned about what might happen in the future. That's in our humanity state. But we always got to remind our humanity. We consistently have to have a Garden of Gethsemane experience. Hallelujah. Because we got to keep reminding our humanity. Hallelujah. That I can make it. Right. I go before God and God tells me I can stand. That I'm built for this. I like that. I like that. I like that that I can do this. So don't think that, okay, just because yet that I made it yesterday, the devil is going to still come to try to camouflage the hope today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But when it gets so heavy, get to the garden. Oh. Hey, oh, boy, shot the high. Hallelujah. Get Hallelujah. To the Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can't handle holding all this stuff. That's why it's done in the spirit. Yes. yes. To God. Because humanity can't hold it. Humanity can't do it. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus, his humanity died on the cross and Glory. transformed into the spirit. Oh Glory. God, when he sent his Holy Ghost, he became the spirit. Hallelujah, because the man Jesus died. Hallelujah, the female Phyllis has to die. Glory to God. The ghost can, can rule and abide yes. because the Phyllis humanity can't hold it. Phyllis humanity can't do it. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. That's why I say God is love. Yes. So the way you can do it, you got to have God yes. because it's his love. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. hallelujah. Yes. That's why we choose to love. Because if we choose God, yes. That's the choice. Okay. Yes. That's the choice yes. of the choice, the choosing love. Because we chose God. That's why we can choose love. See that I'm trying to trying to help you to understand. I know people well, we can't help people. We're not we we're not going carnal right now. We're gonna stay spiritual. The Amen. reason you confused is because you chose God. So you chose the author Amen. of love. All right, say that. Why you can love it. It's a worry and fear are not the plan of God for our lives. God's plan brings hope, not fear. Mm. It said, when we have Jesus, we have hope. And we must cling to the word of God and the hope he gives us. Cling to it. Cling to it. When it looks like it's dwindling, get back to the garden and pull on that word and cling to it. Hallelujah. So he that renews the hope in you. He renews it. Glory to God. Hearing, hearing is an ongoing thing. It is a yes. come by what I heard. Faith come by the hearing. Faith come by the am. Faith come by the is. I'm is hearing. I'm talking bad English, but I want you to understand. It stays in the present. Hear God. Hallelujah. Hear God today so that faith will rise up in you. I heard him yesterday. Hallelujah. But I need to hear him today. Hallelujah. Because my faith has to keep being renewed. My faith has to keep building. It comes by hearing. Not heard. Hearing. Oh, God. Oh, God. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. In, in outline number two, it says there is no fear in love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We stand, we stand uh, um, talking about the love of God and how we can love one another. And it's because everything goes back to God. He said, people fear many things. And we know we all can attest to this. Some fear the dark, <laughs> spiders, <laughs> snakes, heights. Ugh, and age bring about some, some uncomfortability because I didn't used to have a problem with too many heights because I used to love the crazy rides. I used to love the turn upside down and the, the daredevil rides, but <laughs> it changed. I grew out of that one. But <laughs> 
So, but it said typically most people go through their day and never encounter the things that bring them the most fear. <laughs> I, 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 uh, spiders, you encounter spiders, even though that's one of your biggest fears. I know Evangelist on, he has this thing with spiders. Oh my God. So pray for her, Lord. Y'all, you know, that she don't encounter them too often. <laughs> it says, Amen. Thank you for your prayers. <laughs> but it said from time to time, life brings situations that causes us to face our fears and confront them. See, they're not talking about you just afraid of some spiders, but then there's some people that have such a phobia. Let me let, let's 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 take it a little bit further. We're not talking about, oh, I see a bug. I hate water bugs. Oh my God. You know. And, and the Lord had, he, he had, I had to be confronted with that fear. You know, we, we had moved into a house and the neighborhood had, had water bugs in the neighborhood and it would come out in a certain season. And then, and when you first move somewhere, you don't understand how to combat these things. And this certain season and the water bugs would come in the house and we just been up here like, oh my God. And, and so I'm always trying to get somebody else to kill it. But then when you left in the house alone and then the water bugs come out, Oh, Jesus Christ, that's confronting the fear. Either you have to make this big decision, either I'm going to kill it or it's going to still run around and take over my house. So which one do I do? <laughs> and no one is here to save me. I need to be rescued. But since no one is here, I have to do this thing myself. So I have to make up my mind. So, but, <laughs> and I'm still just as afraid of them. However, that it it goes a little bit further than that when it's talking about excuse me lady p tell them how you put on this full armor and you had all of this these 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 weapons <laughs> full armor like <laughs> they they it's like crazy because they yeah everybody know water bugs they just don't want to die so <laughs> you can't just spray them from afar. <laughs> they they survive everything. <laughs> yeah, but it says here that, but we talk about life can bring situations that causes us to face our fears and confront them. There's some things that they have to be brought to us. So you have to, I, and I, I, I at one time, because I'm, I'm a shy person. So I had a, a, a fear of speaking up and things like that. So what happens is as I get older, I had to be confronted with that fear because I can't survive. I wouldn't have been able to survive. I could not even move in my job being afraid to speak up, being afraid to tackle new situations, being afraid to handle challenges. So therefore, you be, I had to be confronted with that part of me. And, and, and that is something where God has to teach you and, and take you through it so that you can overcome. A lot of our things we, we have to overcome. And, and so here it says, uh, um, the fear John was discussing in the lesson text was the fear of failure and the impending judgment. The fear that God will judge our sins and reject us from his presence. That's a, that, that, that's a fear that sometimes people carry and, and they're thinking that, oh, I'm such a sinner. Oh, God is going to give me. You walk around all day, every day, thinking that everything is a sin. So therefore, if I, if I, if I look at this, oh, oh, God is going to judge me. Oh, oh, oh. And you, that's an that's a anxiety and a paranoia that comes. And so it said the reason people often struggle with this fear is due to a negative picture they have of themselves and a misunderstanding of the love of God. And this is what we want to walk away with today. You don't have to live in the anxiety because you don't have an understanding of the love of God. This is what we are learning and we reminding you on today. Um, it said people often struggle to believe God will forgive their sins. We talked about this in the lesson. He, remember our advocate. We have an advocate. And as long as you have not been turned over to a reprobated mind, your advocate is in place. You can repent. 
I'm not talking about saying I'm sorry. And then you repeating the same habits. Repentance have you turn and do something different. That's what repentance brings about an action. Repentance brings about a change. When you have repented, there's going to be an action change. There's going to be something that speaks to, I don't want to face this again. But then that's the understanding of, I actually did something. I was listening to the message on this morning and, and, and the pastor was, that's one thing he was talking about is God brings you to a, I need him state. I, I, I sin. When you get to a state of, I recognize that I sin. That's when a change can happen, but not to say I sin because you told me I sin. And so I'm going to repent because you told me. And then guess what? That's why you repeat the habits. But when you understand the concept of what it, where it came from or what you did, now the, the repentance goes to God and say, I'm sorry. And then the change happens. The transformation happens. The turn, because repentance is a turn. It happens. So what happens is the love of God turns you and stands you back up. Remember the example that I gave you. When we picked up the dog and stood him back up on his legs, that gave him the strength to straighten his leg out and continue on. That's what God does for us. So therefore, we don't have to struggle with the fact that he's going to judge me. He's mad at me. Oh, wow. Because my repentance turned me because of his love. So because I understand that he forgave me, I can walk in the forgiveness. Forgiveness is an act of love. It is an act of love that God created, okay? It says here, uh, 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 sometimes it talked about, maybe they think that their sin was so far beyond what God would ever forgive. Guess what? You, Paul was the one that had, that was killing people, literally taking the lives that God had given. Life is, is, is in God's hands. He's the one that gives life. Paul was going around. I mean, Saul was going around taking the lives. You understand what I'm saying? Just because they named the name of Christ. So killing is, you know, this is one of the labels of a great sin. Woo, that one is so bad. But guess what happened? God forgave him. He took him, transformed him, and changed his name, changed his perspective. His perspective sat him up on his feet and sent him on a mission, sent him on several journeys, sent him with purpose. When we understand that we can walk in the forgiveness, forgiveness, rename love, that's the love of God. He extended to us forgiveness out of his love. So when we get that understanding, there's no sin too great. As long as you're not reprobated, he hasn't left you, then there is an act of forgiveness that can cause you to stand up and walk free. And you don't have to beat yourself up. We got to come away from beating ourselves up when God has already said, I forgive you. All it is you feeling is you're on your own. Sonia. Praise God. Oh, no. oh I, I mute myself. Uh, Baby Perkins, yeah, I dealt with that for years because I used to wonder, God, why do you love me so? Because I was so focused on me. I've messed up. I turned my back on you. God, I've done this. I've done that. Mm -hmm. Through blessing back in his face. God had to tell me, stop worrying about why I love you. Praise me because I do love you because it's so hard for us when we understand it ain't nothing about you. God just chose to. Mm -hmm. That brought that memory back to me. Stop worrying about why I love you. Praise me because I do love you because I choose to love you. 
Mm. I love that. Thank you for that. Because that just brought it home. Because we, why you love me? I'm so bad. That's the best. You're yourself looking at yourself, your negative picture. But if God, and so that's, Sister Sonia, I love what you said because that's slapping God back. You're slapping him with, he said, I gave it to you. And you slap him back and say, well, it, you didn't really give it to me. Well, you, so where is your belief in him? Where is your trust in him? If he forgave me, trust me, I understand it because I walked in it. I walked in constantly not understanding the forgiveness of God, the love of God. I walked in it. And guess what? All of us at one time or another will still do it because as saints of God moving into purpose and moving into what God has for us to do, we will mess up. And then we feel so bad and we like, God, I'm so sorry. Uh, um, forgive me. Now, I don't plan on doing this again. And God says, okay, you used your advocate. So the advocate, you're forgiven. Walk, go walk in peace. Get to what I told you to do. But we so stuck on what I didn't do instead of getting to what we're supposed to be doing. So now we're still in the same place. Mm. What sin could we commit that God would not forgive? I, and I'm not going into the blasphemy and things like that. I'm talking about us, people of God. What sins can be so bad that God would not forgive that keeps you in condemnation? The scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation. We keep it on ourselves because of our misunderstanding. But we're getting an understanding of God's love today that we can walk in it. We don't have to let people put all of that on us and say, well, you were so bad. Mm, God going to get you. Mm, God going to do. Mm, God going to that. Yeah, he going to get you if you don't repent. If you don't repent, yes. There is an outcome for people that sin and do not repent. There is an end, okay? Guess what? It's called death. It is called hell, okay? You, if you want a good message on it, look up Iona Lock. Pray for <laughs> all of those that, 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 that's feeling her. She passed away just recently, and we pray for all of those that feel her missing because I loved her messages. And if you look up uh, uh, on YouTube, there's a place called hell. She's going to teach you what happens with none repentance, okay? And none coming back to Christ. So, but what happens is that's what we put on ourselves. But if you're walking in the love of God, trust the forgiveness of God, okay? Trust that the forgiveness is an act of his love and walk in it. And so it says here, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's the promise of the scripture is in the world word all. All, that's the key word in this scripture. All of us have sinned, all of us, okay? It says he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all of it. You don't have to walk in it. So what you choose to continue to walk in is your choice. It ain't because he's putting it on you. If he forgave you, he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness and he's not remembering it. You are remembering it and you're the one walking in it. Okay. Now, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you can't be forgiven for something you haven't repented for. Remember, he's provided it, but you have to ask for it. Okay? He's provided it, but you have to choose it. But if you keep walking, remember the, the lesson that we said one day we were going to get to sin, sinning, sinner. If you continue to sin, and forgive me, Lord, and you get up, forgive me, Lord. You know, there's people that commit adultery and fornication on a regular basis. And they say, forgive me, Lord. And then they go back the next day and say, forgive me, Lord. They go back the next day and say, forgive me, Lord. Are they really repenting? No. And you, God is not dumb. He's not stupid. First of all, he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows 
no, you're not, you haven't changed. You're not ready. You're not really sorry. You just know it's wrong. So you're going to do the act of saying something, but you're not really sorry. I deal with the heart. I don't deal with the mouth. I don't deal with the words. I don't deal with the letter. I deal with the heart. It says here, perfect love cast out fear. Love is the antidote to fear. And when we see the word perfect in the Bible, often, as in the case of this verse, we can substitute it with the word complete. Perfect is complete. So we say, be ye perfect. We're talking about be complete in him. Be complete in whatever he's called you to do and to be. The concept of being, of the concept of being today is that complete love is the antidote for fear. If you have a problem with fear and if it constrains you, if it pauses you, if it paralyzes you, get into the complete love of God so that you can rest in him and that he can give you the antidote to the thing that keep paralyzing you. That when we understand the love of God, we do not have to live in fear of what, what may happen in the future. And that's it, you know, we can be concerned. Say with the coronavirus, we can be concerned. We are concerned, but we don't have to be in fear that, oh God, oh, the corona, oh, oh, there's some people with such a of the corona until the anxiety is what's going to take them out. They never <laughs> but the anxiety takes them out. Okay? So here it says instead we can rest in the perfect love of God. With this in mind, it is important to remember that love is still being made perfect in us. It is going to continue to be. Being is a action. It is a current current state we are constantly being made perfect tomorrow is a whole new day whole new mercies and we have to be perfect tomorrow but we can't be focused on being perfect tomorrow you got to focus on today it say when we fail make mistakes and worry about the future we must not get too down on ourselves this lesson is bringing us to ourselves it's teaching us something our our trust has to be in god we have to lean on god because we beat ourselves up when we make mistakes when we fail and we worry about it we beat ourselves up so bad trust me i've lived it i know Am I there yet? No, but I understand it. I understand it because I've lived in a state of condemnation. I've lived in a state of I I'm never right or I'm always wrong or I'm always just never right. It's always, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, until you get the concept that, oh my God, I'm not living up to, to everything that God has given me, all my benefits. My benefit says if I mess up, I can repent. I have the advocate. Am I using my advocate? Am I using my advocate? Am I walking in his love? Sister Owens, evangelist. My God, my God. We have, we have such a beautiful lesson here. We have such benefits. You know, when, when, when the, um, the priest would go before God and they in the holy way back in the Old Testament and, and they wear the ephod, they put those stones, the mm -hmm. ephod have the, the, the breastplate, you know, and they, they uh, when David said, uh, 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 bring me the ephod, that's because he was gonna go before God and when God see the stones, he remembers his covenant with his people. And it's like, Lord, don't see what we've done. Just remember what you told us. Remember your love for us. When he see those, those, those covenant things, they put it there so he can remember and, and, and not be angry anymore. Have mercy. Lord, see my ephod. Lord, see my praise and have mercy. You know, 
-hmm. And this what we have today being under grace and not under the law with the advocate we have. He already said, when I see the blood. Mm -hmm. I'll pass over you. Right. That wasn't just for the Passover. Because see, the blood still works. Mm -hmm. So when I go before God, if I've done something, I'm thinking of his grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing the, the grant, the privilege. What a privilege it is to carry <laughs> everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. I can go all the way into the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Hey, priest, I can pray for the priest. Oh, all right. <laughs> go all in. Wait, I'm all in. How we say go in. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Mm -hmm. I, have, I come boldly to the throne of God mm -hmm. because the blood still works. It's still atoning. It's, mm -hmm. it's atoning. And if that is in place like it should be, mm -hmm. he said, when I see the blood, yeah, yeah. I'll pass up. He's still looking at it. Yes. Yeah, God. The cherubims, the cherubims in the garden went at the gate was blocking. Hallelujah. shot. But now the cherubims are on the mercy seat of God. Not just in the on the Ark of the Covenant, but in heaven, where Jesus put his blood there. And they're witnessing. They're not blocking. Mm -hmm. huh? They're witnessing. That the blood is there mm -hmm. and it still works. Praise God. Again, Ms. Clark. Praise the Lord. I'm loving, I'm loving the love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just loving the love. I thought about something when Evangelist Owens was talking about uh you can go in and you can do this. And I don't know if it was said earlier. I mean, I can't remember if it was said earlier, but when when you said, I loved it when you said. I have to remind my humanity. Mm -hmm. He said, do this in remembrance mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. When you do, and then what is your this that you going to do in remembrance of him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do this, Lord, I do this because you, you, you died on Calvary for me. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I do this I live this way. I love this way. I carry myself this way. I carry myself surrendered unto you because I do this <clears throat> in remembrance yes. of you. I remember, I have to, in order to remember, <clears throat> there's a recall to your mind kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind humanity when my humanity gets frail. That's it. Because all the time, <coughs> excuse me, all the time he don't come. He, he's not going to automatically come and try to kill you. He's going to come to weary you. Mm -hmm. Very well. And when he wears the saints, wear the saints down, I got to remind yes, my yes. humanity. He is Yes, my yes, yes. Hallelujah. Uh. Strength like no other. Mm. That reaches to me. There's a that right there <clears throat> when you're going through something, and the enemy always does this. He always does my throat like this, but I all right. I'm not. I rebuke it. I'm not even. You know. Um. When pa Pastor preached the message. He said, "Why? Why are we in it? Mm -hmm. In everything." In that thing, whatever your thing is, you remind in your humanity. Mm -hmm. Each step of, as, like you, when you were saying, have I made it? No. Mm -hmm. But because I have hope, mm -hmm. I remind myself, I remind my humanity. Sometimes I used to have to tell, I used to tell people, when they say in this flesh dwells no good thing. Mm -hmm. I said, I have to tell people, I have to remind people, remember your brain is flesh. Mm -hmm. Your brain under your skull is flesh. It's considered flesh. So your brain, when your brain tries to frail you, right? When it brings you down with this despondent thoughts, whatever, you got to remind yourself 
You have to go back in thought and bring yourself to what he's already brought you through. Is it nothing too hard for him? He said, ask him for a hard thing. Lord, I don't, I, I don't understand if I don't know if I can love like this. Ask me for a hard thing because if you, if you tell me you want to love, I'm going to give you something to love. I'm going to teach you this thing. But you got to move in what you asked me for. Mm -hmm. And as and I thought about that when Evangelist Orange was talking about going in. So she can go in for the priest, if she, you know, <laughs> you know. And I thought about, I do this in remembrance of, of him, of how he loved me. Mm -hmm. How he didn't even... <laughs> He knew me before I knew me. He said, I knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb. Yes, yes. So to know that I was going to do all these things to myself. Because it wasn't him that did it to me. It was me doing it to myself in my, in my pathway to him. Mm -hmm. And the unconditional love that he gave me, why wouldn't I just want to love on him? Because when I think back, and many times I would have been, should have been, could have been. Right. Mm -hmm. Just those three words, according to my life, make me love him. Mm -hmm. Do you know how people say you got triggers? Hallelujah. You get triggers, and that could that's a pro and a con. Because if when you out there with God without God and you didn't have trauma, you've been traumatized and, and all this kind of stuff, there are triggers that are cause you to be like go off. Sometimes people go off, sometimes people just start crying, sometimes people just get you know, just get angry or they get secluded. What are your triggers that make you love on him? There are triggers that I make you your go up. Jesus. There are triggers that make you say, hallelujah. Thank him. Just thank him. Hot devil shout out. Somebody, some, one person said, I don't need a song. I don't need a, a whole bunch of music. I just need a memory. Hello, Shonda. Hallelujah. This I recall to my mind. I just need a memory. Yes. And the love will start flowing. I don't need a whole bunch of a big old musical. I don't need a, it don't necessarily need to be communion. I just need a memory. Hello, and the love starts and flowing. Know. And if he was in my presence, I got a hug on him. I got a love on him. Touch but him. because Woo! he's omnipresent, mm -hmm. I love on him. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. I love yes. on anybody that want him because I want them to experience the same love that love. I experience. Yes. That, you know how sometimes somebody be like, oh, God, what did happen to you? You just... You know, when you first get saved, you it's like some people give an example, you don't want to stump on an ant, but I didn't have that experience. I killed them ants. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have them experience. I killed them ants and them roaches, whatever. <laughs> the thing is, though, when you first get it, you you lie lie in or whatever, but the love that you feel, yeah. it's like no other love that you just like, you ready to tell. You want so many people to feel it. Yeah. But then you don't want to, you don't want you, it's like you just it's a presence that where you are, you don't want to leave it. But then as you grow in God, you just want you so busy wanting people to to and that and I must I'm speaking for me. I want so many people to feel this that My if God. he's using me to allow them to feel it, I'm grateful because I knew at one time. I wasn't, for me, I wasn't as lovable, for me. But that's because I was out there. But when I remind my humanity. Hallelujah. That was a strong statement. Oh, yes. Remind your humanity. Hallelujah. When you're yes. going through, remind your humanity. Humanity. In his frailty, when I'm weak, he's strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. And, and, and I, 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 and y'all just, the, hey. I'm 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 done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Sonia. Oh, <laughs> Two things real quick. I was listening to Evangelist Diane. The first thing she made me remember um a couple of months ago, my sister buried her only child, only child, no husband, no nothing. And I was telling my mother, okay, we we the only two apostolics in the family. We've been down in Jesus' name, but you gotta remember 
and they just, you know, people just throw people in the heaven because on one side of his thing, it was him with some wings on the other side. He had a fifth of this and a fifth of that. And people just steady, the preacher, everybody said he put him on up in heaven. And I kind of scratched my head. I said, Lord, you don't deliver me from all that stuff. I said, but you can't judge. I said, God, you have to help me. Pastor Scott asked a question on Facebook. He said, tell me, who is it down on this earth you don't want to go to heaven with? And I thought about it. And it, be, it has to become personal. When she said, oh, my, this, I live, I live like this because I love you. I, I walk like this because I love you. I want to show you I love you. And I said, God, I don't care who you let in heaven. I mean, I know what the Bible says. I don't want you to leave me out. And then I thought about, she said, um, oh, my gosh, I forgot. But when she was talking, it just reminded me of, our um just our connection to god our love for god it reminded me of how we should just be with god what we should think about god and remember a trigger over here for the christmas they had a um they fed us so uh, served a lunch and you know you would think you would play holiday music they played every single music i grew up with because I grew up on soft rock and um, the oldies but goodies, as they say. Oh, my God. I think when they got to one song, I was like, God, you ain't fair. You ain't right. Everybody over there who was saying, Lord, I love you. I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm this, I'm that. Was shaking, was moving, was grooving. And I was tripping off the fact, God, I really don't want to do this because, God, I love you. And I was telling, they was talking about moving, Sonia. And I said, no, I can't move left. Because if I move my left hip, I might move my right hip. Then I might do this and I might do that. Because I know that I, I can be a domino effect person. When she said the word triggers, it remind me, you have to know yourself. You have to know your limitations. And what triggered you to love God? What triggered you? That God, if you kept me through this, you can keep me through that. You brought me out of this, you can bring me out of that. You healed me of this, this other little stuff is going to be so minor. That's it. I know you want to get on. This is such an awesome lesson. Awesome. Praise God, mm -hmm. praise God, praise God. I, I love everything everybody was saying. The triggers, I, I love that. What's the, what's the trigger that triggers you, um, triggers that response uh, to God? It, it, uh, and and Benjamin Zorn was saying, when I think on the goodness, you know, sometimes you got to think and study on it and, and everything else. You know, you understand what I'm saying? When the devil is pressing or, or, or when you feel heavy, and, and, and that's where, why we say the hope, the hope that we're learning. The, the only way we can get to the place, and I'm going to move fairly quickly we go to the end. Um, we can't, can't love one another without understanding uh, of the love of God, what the love of God he has for us. If you can't understand the love of God for your life, for you, Understanding his forgiveness in your life, understanding how his love manifests in your life, understanding what it means in your life. That's what makes it difficult to love one another. You have to receive it and accept it for your life so that Evangelist Clark was saying, I want others to feel it. I want others to experience it. You can't give what you don't experience. You can't give what you don't have. And so what this lesson is trying to do is get us to, to uh, 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 take the love of God and understand our place in it, understand what he has done for us and what he has allotted for us and what he has given to us. Therefore, we can love one another. Therefore, we can apply it to one another when we understand what we have to apply. It says here, uh, uh, even though we are not perfect, we can work every day to allow the love of God to be made perfect in us. And, it's so, and so the scripture came along and said, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that which he, uh, which he, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So perform it. 
will perform it. He begun the good work. So that means he's going to continue to do it and continue to work it until the day of Jesus Christ. He didn't say it was going to end tomorrow. He's, it's not going to end. The work that he's performing in you is not going to stop until Jesus comes. It's not going to stop until you or you are caught up. It's not going to stop until you have finished your course. That's when it stops. But, get, but guess what? It goes down in with you. Because how you go down is how you get up. Our, one of our pastors used to say that how you lay is how you're going to get up. So if you don't go down right, you ain't getting up right. It's not going to be, he's not coming back in the grave to save anybody. He did that already. He's not repeating stuff. He left it here for you to get it right. But if you die without him, you're going to raise without him. So that's the whole concept of we got to work this thing on a daily basis. We got to get to understanding the love of God and walking in it on a daily basis. Because when he comes for us, however you are, when he comes, is how you're going to get out. When he comes back, it said we need not fear God's judgment because he loves us. And we talked about that, uh, um, that we don't have to fear all of that. Grace is not a freedom to sin card. Jump it down a little bit further. Uh, um. It, it talks about in many ways, this is how the grace of God works, okay? The grace of God is his love for us. And, and we didn't earn it, we didn't deserve it, but he has given it to us. It said the grace of God, the grace is not a freedom to sin card that many imagine to be. Rather, grace is a help you learn card, okay? It, it helps you learn. If we don't learn stuff by the things with the things that we go through, that's a problem. That's that's a problem. Why do we keep repeating stuff that didn't work? If we don't learn something, we just going spinning our wheels, going around a merry-go-round when God has allowed us to learn some things and we don't learn it. We just keep going, no, it's gonna work. No, it's gonna work, and you're doing the same thing. That's called, everybody know where I'm going. That's called insanity, okay? So it says here, it's a help you learn card extended to believers so we may grow into the spiritually mature men and women God has designed us to be. He don't want us living in swaddling clothes. He wants us to mature. That is his intent. And when we are living in the grace of God, it says there's no reason to fear. Grace is our teacher. Our confidence does not come from our good deeds or our abilities. It comes from knowing God loves us. It, uh, uh, and, and we talked about earlier when Evangelist said we can go in now. We can go before God ourselves. We don't need nobody to do it for us. Yes, help me pray. Help me. But I don't want to miss the opportunity of going to God for myself. And that's only you can do that because you know he loves you. If you don't know it, you're going to stay in this state of iffiness and should I, shouldn't I, I'm condom I, I, I stay in condemnation, I stay in fear, I'm steady judging myself, I'm steady not good enough, I'm steady this and steady that, because we don't know. We got to get to the place of knowing. That's where the boldness comes, is when we know what God has given us, what we know what God has called us to do, what we know what God has placed in us. You operate with boldness because you know. When you don't know, you're so iffy and you're so unsure, you're so unsettled because you don't know. You can't play knowing. It's going to show. But when you know in whom you serve, Hallelujah, that's infectious. That's going to cross over to somebody else. Hallelujah, yes, yes. Can't no one else suppress. You can't suppress what I know about God because that's me and God's relationship. You can't do nothing about what I know. Yeah, not what you told me, but it's what I know. God help me. It says we must share God's love with those who need the Lord. That in a lot of times, those who need God, the ones who 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 
who try to talk the biggest and, and things like that need the love of God the most. They need to experience the love of God. You know how the bullies, when you see a lot of bullies and kids and kids being bullies, they really need so much love. It is because of their lack of what they're getting that causes them to bully others because they want to pull people to, down to where they feel comfortable. So if it works on you, then I'm going to keep using you because that makes me feel better if I can pull you down to my that's it. that's it they need God they need the love of God so much and they don't realize it and it says here that uh, uh for remember oh this I love this statement that this guy Charles Dickens had said my boy said a father to his son treat everybody with politeness even those who are rude to you and I love this statement here. It says, for, uh, it says, let me go back here. For remember that you show courtesy to others, not because they are gentlemen, but because you are one. Oh, I love that statement. I love that statement. It says here, this, this sentiment Man. for us today, this should be the sentiments of the church. We share the love of God with everyone we meet, not because they are Christians, because you can't pick and say who's a Christian and who's not a Christian and, and all this kind of stuff. That, that's not your job. That, that's not what we do. Guess what? We 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 guess what? We do know the spirit connects, and we do know. Uh, and sometimes I can hear somebody say "Hallelujah" from across the room, and I know when they're connected with God because guess what? I have Him, and I can hear it. You understand what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna talk about the sound. That's a whole nother lesson when we're talking about the sound of it. So I'm not going there. But we don't want to pick and choose and stand in God's shoes. Okay, in the judgment, it says here, we share the love of God with everyone we meet, not because they are Christians, but because we are. Who are you in God? What are you doing because of who you are? So if you got a problem with showing love, who are you? Without that witness, how will others know what's true? what true godly love should look like. We should be thankful God did not wait for us to become believers before he died on the cross. Oh, God, this is deep. He loved us in spite of our sin and saved us before we ever knew we needed it. So, so in using the example of the bully, we, you know, if they, you put more love on that bully and show him more attention, you, you understand what I'm saying? You will see a softening. You will see a whoa, whoa, because sometimes they don't even know what love looks like. They don't know what it feels like. So all I know is how to act like this because that's all I know. But when God, see the word know is the key factor here. When God has shown us love, he has taught us love. It is something we know. So therefore we can share it because it's something we know. Because of who I am in him, I can share what he has given me to share. Let us love one another now because we have an understanding. Now because we know where we fit into this scheme and the plan of things. Now we know because the forgiveness is an act of love that God has given us. Now we know that because God loved us first. Now we know that because I'm not no good, I don't have enough love to give anybody, but because God is in me and he is love and I understand where this love fits, now I can love one another. We're no longer under the law. Amen, I amen. Understand what this actually means. But it says here, there is a law. However, there is a law to follow. They're the stricter law to follow. And it's talking about the new commandment on the John, at John 13, 30, 40, 35. A new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. So when you got the understanding of how he's loved you, that's what we've been doing. That you also love one another. You apply this. You give this yes. to someone else. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. How would they know if you don't love? How, what are you showing? What are you showing? But because I'm a Christian, because I love God, you got to know it be, from the love that I give you. 
the love that I share with you. That's how you're going to know it. Praise God. He said he that it said here talked about dysfunctional families and, and talked about these things should not be found in the family of God. Family of God shouldn't be, shouldn't have the label of dysfunctional. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. What were you trying to get rid of? I'm tired of hearing about what this preacher didn't do and that preacher messed up and that preacher. There's so many crooked people. Amen. You should not be named among us. And there's a scripture that talking about some things should not be named among us. If you call yourself a Christian, we shouldn't have the label of being a dysfunctional family. Christians, we, you in your corner of the kingdom, I'm in my corner of the kingdom. We're supposed to be doing the work in our corners so that all four corners match up and make a perfect. Amen. That's the way it's supposed to be. But we become dysfunctional when we want to act out and do things that's against God, that should not be named among us. We're supposed to show the love. He that loves does not know God. He that loves not does not know God. And we already talked about that. It said, in other words, what people are producing in their lives is more important than what they are saying. Remember I told you, it's not about what you're saying. It's about what you're producing. You can say words all day long. Some people say words because they know it's just right to say but do you really know the magnitude of why this is necessary? So if you're saying, I'm sorry, did you get the fullness of what you're sorry for? God is looking at your heart, not All right, all right. Better say that, Lady Perkins. Jesus told us we must look on the lookout, be on the lookout for those trying to see us. We talked about this in another lesson, talking about wolf and sheep's clothing, talking about discernment. If you know God, he's going to give you some discernment. You know sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. So sounding brass is the letter. Praise God. It said here, notice, look, see, Jesus was not saying to judge them by their ministry, but to judge them by their fruits. That's what people of God, what a person does in ministry does not make that person spiritual. Oh God, that's, 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 that, that has to be. Right now, say that. That needs to be up on the billboard. Your ministry does not make you spiritual. You can feed all of the, the hungry people. All right. It don't make you spiritual. Some things that's you right. Just right to do. That, that, God got, it's a lot of people and, and thank God for them. But what right. does God see in your heart? Hallelujah. The spiritual is what connects to God. Hallelujah. You don't want to become, get into a place where he's saying, yes, I, but I never knew you. Oh, hallelujah. Wait. But I said, I did this. I cast out demons. I did this. Yeah, but depart because I still didn't know you. Jesus, say that. You didn't tap into the spirit realm. You didn't Jesus. tap into me. Me. Stayed in the letter. You stayed here, but you went yeah. in. Glory. It's a rather the evidence of the fruit of the spirit being produced reveals. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Spiritual maturity. We have to get mature. Get out of the swaddling clothes. Can't stay wrapped up, not being able to grow. He wants us mature. It says, First John four and twenty declares that people who have hate in their hearts toward others yet proclaim they love God are actually liars. You cannot say you love God and you hate your brother. We, that's strong words. Amen. I'm not saying people haven't done anything to you. I'm not saying that things don't hurt. I'm not saying that. But there's a difference in when I hate somebody. Yes. I can't yes. even speak to them. I can't even pray for them. I can't even hold them up. If there's a need, and guess what? It talked about earlier, some things come to face our fears. So sometimes something will happen to somebody that done something to you. And God calls you to go to them and pray for them or call and say, well, I'm still praying for you. And they know what they've done. Yes, That's yes. how God does. He lets you face it. 
Where is your heart? Where is your love? Amen. And he'll have you face it. Oh, God. We don't want to come up being a liar. It said, because God loved us, we must love one another. Forgiveness is often the most difficult part of loving our brothers and our sisters. We, heard, we harbor feelings of bitterness and hurt in our hearts. We harbor it. Okay? That is not what you harbor. Hallelujah. You hurt. There's a healing for hurt. There's time in healing. There is time yes. for healing. Hallelujah. But when God calls you to a higher level, you all right, all right. because he may take and say, okay, even while you still healing, while you still hurt, you still got to pray for him. You still got to show up. You still, because I called you to it. I built you to make it. I built you a stand. You can do it. So now I got to tell humanity, I got to back it down. Back it down, humanity. Hallelujah, because I got to love anyway. I'm sitting here bleeding, but I got to love anyway. Hallelujah, because God is in me and he commanded me. So I choose him. So love comes with the package. Oh, God. Hallelujah, what comes with the package. It say, how often do we struggle with forgiving someone? Hallelujah, who makes an ill-advised comment or hurts us in some way. Uh, I, maybe nobody else have experienced this, you know, I don't know, but I have. Okay. <laughs> Yet Jesus hung on the cross and requested forgiveness for those who were unworthy. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. This is another thing that we're knowing. If you knew, Bleeding and loving. If you knew, if you knew, you wouldn't be doing me like this. If you understood it, you wouldn't be doing me like this. But I love you anyway. I love you anyway. I got to bleed in love, bleed in love. Hallelujah, while God is healing me. The more love I show, this, the healing process starts. The more I forgive, the healing process is beginning. The healing process is starting. So because I choose God, I choose to love. It says, hallelujah to look past offenses and forgive we must allow the compassion of the lord to overtake us and then get over ourselves and forgive those who have done us wrong we can't put people on the back burner you can you you know you don't keep putting your face for somebody to keep slapping you there's a there's a we we talking wisdom there is a wisdom that goes along with how you handle things and people. There is a wisdom and God gives us that. If you lack it, ask him, he'll give it to you. And he give it liberally, he'll, he'll give it to you. Hallelujah. But it don't negate forgiveness. It don't negate showing love. It don't negate loving them. It don't negate any of that. And evangelist, I see your hand and we getting ready to close. I'll be, I'll be real quick. You know, when we, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we have the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. That's the evidence that he came in us. But that's not the only evidence that he's in us. This love is ongoing evidence. Because mm -hmm. by this shall all men know. This is evidence mm -hmm. that he's in us. Evidence, mm -hmm. ongoing that's evidence. Evidence. That's evidence that we are disciples yes not just people that eat the fish in the five loaves no disciples follow on evidence of disciples is this love mm -hmm. praise god thank you there is an evidence and, and that evidence produces fruit it produces it produces they say it is true in our internalizing the message. We want to internalize. We want to bring this home. Remember, we can't love one another without understanding God's love for us individually. And it says here, it is true. God's love is powerful enough to save us from sin. Anything, any sin, any, there's nothing too bad, any sin. However, if a person desires to live in it and refuse to seek forgiveness, God's love will not interfere with the person's free will. So let's get it together. Let's get, let's get, don't get it twisted. He came and for God so loved the world. So you, everyone is under the umbrella of God's love. He gives everybody the choices. His love says you have a choice. 
But if you refuse to seek it, to seek forgiveness, he's not going to interfere. That's what his love does. It don't interfere with your free will. He say how he say free will will free will does not exist if people do not have the ability to make choices, even if those choices would harm them. Now he can be sitting up, you know, he's looking at us, and he could be you're hurting his heart because he say all you have to do is come to me, all you have to do is submit to me, and I'll make it better. All you have to do is submit to me, and I'll take you higher than you ever thought you can go. But then you choose to go a different way. That hurts his heart. But he said, but I got to allow you. I got to allow you. He said, love must allow us to make bad choices. Oh my God. Isn't that how we have to do it, parents, with our children? We got to take our hands off. We got to take our hands off. And we are watching them make bad choices for their lives. Now he said, bring them up in the way they should go. And when you do that, then you have to rely on God to bring them back. But you have to look at them making bad choices. But the love says, I can't interfere because it's your choice. However, the love of God will reach, implore, compel, and chase us down, giving us a way out of eternal damnation. It's going to steal. He said, I chase you. I chase the ones I love. I chase you. I keep coming at you. The word keeps coming at you. The word keeps saying, get it together. The word keeps saying, come back. The word keeps saying, come up. The word keeps saying, stand up. The word keeps saying, I made you to make it. I created you to make it. I've given you all the tools and the ability to make it. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, but go in. Submit fully to me, and I'm going to take you higher than you ever thought you could. I, I'm going to keep trying to rule you. He said the love of God is fully realized when people come to understand that God loves them just as they are, however you are. You are under the umbrella of love because you're part of the world. Praise God. But he loves them too much to leave them where they are. He loves you. You're part of the world because you're in that umbrella. But he loves you too much to just leave you there. He said, I got a greater thing for you. Hallelujah. You're under my umbrella of love. But I yes. want you to be in it. I want to yes. in you. I want you to choose it because I don't want you to stay where you are. Because remember, we all were born and shaped in iniquity. We all, yes. all were born in sin. Yes. We all were born in sin. But guess what? His love said, but I don't want you to stay there. Hallelujah. You are ready that you can come out and you can be in right fellowship with me. I can help you. I have an, I'm your advocate. I forgive you. I stand you up. I carry you. I gave you hope. I catapult you to higher heights and deeper depths, but you got to choose it. Thank you, Jesus. Once you, me, once you choose me, I come with love. Therefore, you can yes. love one another. Sister Sonia, I see your hand. Praise God. My God, my God. This very short, the last thing I have to say, that statement alone, that he loved me enough not to leave me where I was, that enough will always have me loving in spite of, forgiving in spite of, not because of, because reasons run out. Just because he didn't leave me, I don't want to see nobody where they at. That statement alone just got me and just resonated in me. He loved me enough not to leave me where I was. He loved me, but he loved me to get me, not just leave me there. Woo, he showed me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I love that. I love it. Love, you know what love does? It compels me. Lifted me. Once, because God is love, he had to place truth on me in order for me to see myself in order to prove him. So love compels me to tell you the truth. Love don't yeah. want to lie to you because lying to you will cause you to stay where you are. And his love says, I don't want to ever leave you where you are. When you come into my presence, when you come any place that I am, you will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Him, you can be hallelujah whatever i place for you you can have it but you gotta choose it hallelujah remember he loves us too much to leave you where you are 
Hallelujah. But because he first loved me, I can love you. Let us love one another. Praise God. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Pray for the hands of the master. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love lifted me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Lifted me. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, lady people. That be, uh, another beautiful lesson. Let me um, unmute myself here. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, again, we, yeah, we thank God. Thank God for, for Lady P for that beautiful lesson that she just taught. And, uh, let us love one another. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank God for going through the entire lesson, breaking it down. Thank, and, I, and I love, and I, just like Sister Sonia, Lady P uh, accented again right at the end. I love that last part. He said, you know, for it's the love of God fully realized when people can come to understand that God loves you them just the way they are. Mm -hmm. But he loves them too much to mm. leave them where Wait. they are. You mm. got to, I love that. Glory mm. to God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's it. That's thank it. God he loved us first. Hallelujah. Thank God, Hallelujah. Thank God he didn't leave us where we were. <laughs> Glory Hallelujah. to God. And I, love, and I love it with something else. Uh, uh, Lady P has said it's a package deal. When you choose the Lord, when you choose the Lord, look at the package deal that comes with mm -hmm. it. Glory mm -hmm. to God, the fruits of the Spirit. So, so again, because he loved us first, he allowed, he don't leave us where we are. Because mm -hmm. where I was, I didn't have the package. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I was yeah. without. Glory to God. But because I chose him, mm -hmm. glory to God, he brought me forth mm -hmm. and with the package. Glory, which Praise is him. God. Glory Praise to God. God. Oh, glory to God. And I love it because it, uh, through all that, he, he knows, you know, for us in, in Jeremiah, when he talks about for us, you know, he, he, knew, he knew you when, you know, he, or he, or, um, he, he takes, you know, he knows you expected, you know, expected you expected in. in. He already know, glory to God, you are expected in. And I just want to say, as far I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace. And not of evil. What to give you an expected end? Glory to God, my God, my God. Package deal. Glory mm. to God. Glory, Glory to, God. to God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us love one another. And again, mm. and, and it shows because of the love, it shows that we are His disciples. Mm. Glory, Glory to God, my God, my God. Again, we thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for each and every one that's that joined us with us today. Thank God for your presence. Thank God for, and that's one of Zoom and conference line. Thank God, let us love one another. Glory to God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lesson. Well broken down. We thank God uh, for that beautiful lesson by Lady P. Um, at this time, we're going to uh, go into our announcement and then we're going to uh, dismiss. So again, we thank God for your, for being with us. Lord. Praise the Lord. We just want to thank everyone for joining us on yes. the line today. Yes. Um, praise God. We come down to the last Sunday of the month. God has brought us to the last Sunday of the month. Yes, yes. He's an awesome God. Yes, he, he did is. it again. He yes. Did it again. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he's done nothing else. He did, he did it again. Hey, God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We got enough to praise him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The hallelujah. last of 2021. He did, he did it again. He did it again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. With all death around us, as Evangelist Clark said, he kept us and did it again. Yes. Hey, hey God. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Praise oh, God. God. Hallelujah. 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 We're not in the building, but we're in his presence. Yes. Hey, hey God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Because where he is, we can be. Yes. Hey, hallelujah. God. Hallelujah, because yes. he is the I am. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Hey, I feel this thing. Hey, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. We want to thank you for joining us. Hey, God, yes. I yes. Thank love you. you. Oh, I love you. I love thank you. you. Praise God. Praise God. What we want to do is just thank everyone for their giving in this past year. Yes. Oh, Oh my God, you have called us to help sustain the ministry when we appreciate it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But when you want to continue, we want to give you the avenues. And yes. that's with our Givelify. You can find us. You can find us on Zelle through Bank to Bank, or you could just mail it to the church. Thank but we ask God to continue 
Yes. Uh, uh, blessings on your life. Hallelujah. Yes, now yes. give it back to you a hundredfold. Hallelujah. A hundredfold. And like we always say, it may not be in cash, but it can. it's in a value that's beyond the monetary. Yes. We ask God for your peace. We ask God for your prosperity. We ask God to give you health. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we pray uh, that he keeps you yes. during this time. Yes. We pray for that. We won't, we'll be, um, We'll be here for prayer on Monday night, but we won't be having Bible class, but we will be having watch night watch on Thursday night. Yes. Meet us back here on Zoom mm. Thursday night at 11 o'clock. Yes. We're going to be back here at 11 so that we can join as a family Glory and God. pray into the new year. Pray and, and just reflect yes. on the year that God has given us reflect on yes. his many many blessings yes. we can look at the stuff that's going on we can yes. look at the we look yes. at the stimulus package and what's signed and what's not signed but guess yes. what god has kept us yes and we hallelujah thank you we have a hope we Lord. have a hope and Lord. we expecting it for the hallelujah. future he's yes. god of the past the present and the future yes. and we right. that's a trigger expecting. so we are praising him into our and we, we know in who we believe yes. so you meet us back here on the 11 o'clock i know some of us may be sleep but i hope you set your alarm clock and say i gotta wake up i gotta wake up to get back up here at 11 <laughs> but join us yes, yes. <laughs> join us here at 11 o'clock uh december the 31st that is thursday night at 11 o'clock to to we're gonna pray into the new year and, and we're gonna just just reflect yeah we're gonna reflect, reflect. we're gonna remind yeah. our humanity yeah. what god is all right trigger it find man, our man. what god, yeah. god has been hallelujah how good he hallelujah. is hallelujah yeah. hallelujah may everything you do may everything you've gone through <laughs> reflect on how good God is. Yes. You pray for us. And those God. that feel, that yes. under the sound of my voice, if you listen to this later and you need prayer, you can contact us. You can go to our website, rcafla.com, and you can look us up. We, you can email us. All the information is there. If you want to be saved, you want to be baptized, we have the means and the ability. So we don't want to cut you off. We want you to experience the love of God for yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. So the ability to introduce you to the kingdom is still available. Just because we on Zoom, it is still available. Yes. We have to fulfill our purpose and let you know Amen. that God is good. Yes. And his, yes. his hand is still outstretched. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And he's calling for you too. Yes. Hallelujah. He Hallelujah. We yes. don't just want to be under the umbrella. We want to be in it. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you have the ability to be in it. So you can contact us and let us know. We're praying for all of you. Just send your prayer request through the email. We'll get it. We, we have the ability to see it. So we will uh, be there for you if you need us. God bless you. Turn it back into the hands of the pastor. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My God, my God. Yes. We thank God again for your presence. Thank God for being with us. And we're looking to meet with, with, with everyone. Glory to God on watch night service. And it's, it's uh, like I said, it's, it, we're not going it's, it's to, it's a short service, but it, it give us all an opportunity to reflect on, on this, on this year, 2020, what God has, how he has brought us through and, and kept us through our whole and it's a blessing to be able to know that what God has kept us through as we crossing over, glory to God, to a, a year that we have never known before. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. But God already knows. Yes, glory yes, to God. Yes, yes. So so it's going so and, and then on a watch night service, it's gonna allow you to be able to see what is watch night service, what did it even started from, where it what why call it watch night service? We're gonna find that out as well. Glory to God. And sometimes it's, it's good to know why you do what you do. Glory Amen. to God. You know, see, sometimes yeah. people say we're gonna have this, but what does that mean? Glory to God. Yes. That's, yes. What, that's what we that's what we we ask God to continue to help us. We don't want to be doing something just to be doing it. We want to know why, Amen. what we're doing. What we doing. Yeah. Glory to God. So we thank God for your for your presence. Thank God for being with us today. And again, we thank God for and we look forward to you joining us, like I say, on, on watch night service. Glory to God for so we all, all can reflect. And we all have an opportunity to reflect. Glory to God on that night. Glory to God. So again, we thank God for your for each and every one being with us. And I just want to say thank God for all the ones, my God, from <laughs> Zoom and Compass Line. But if there's nothing else, we're gonna go ahead and be dismissed. And again, thank God for you being with us one more time. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for allowing us to, to be here one more time. We thank you for Hallelujah. waking us up. Hallelujah. We thank you, O Lord, for strengthening us today, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for carrying us throughout this time right now, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for allowing us to be able to come together and hear the word of God. Lord God, we thank you, O Lord, thank for you, us Jesus. not only allowing us to hear it, but Lord God, help us to apply it. Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. Lord God, as we leave this place, but not your presence. We ask you to bring us back to the next appointed time, oh Lord. And if we ever thank give you the honor, and if we ever give you the glory, in Jesus' mighty Jesus. name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Glory amen. to God. Amen. Have a blessed evening, everyone. Glory to God, everyone. God bless.